Sports. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Are any plastics safe? That's the title, that's the question of a new expose by Mother Jones that may shock anyone who drinks out of plastic bottles, gives their children plastic sippy cups, or eats out of plastic containers. For years, public campaigns have been waged against plastic-containing BPA, bisphenol A, a controversial plastic additive. But a new investigation by Mother Jones magazine has revealed that chemicals used to replace BPA may be just as, if not more, dangerous to your health than their cousin compound. BPA is still widely used in everything from the lining of soup cans to printed receipts, even though studies show it mimics the behavior of estrogen in the human body and have linked it to breast cancer, diabetes, obesity and heart disease. Just last week, a study estimated the use of BPA in food and beverage containers is responsible for some $3 billion a year in health care costs. But because BPA can hamper brain and organ development in young children, it's been banned in bottles and sippy cups since 2012. Now new studies show the plastic products being advertised as BPA-free and sold by companies such as Evanflow and Nalgene Tupperware are still releasing synthetic estrogen. The Mother Jones report goes on to look at how the plastics industry has used a big tobacco-style campaign to bury the disturbing evidence evidence about the products you use every day. We're joined in Washington, D.C. now by Mariah Blake, staff reporter with Mother Jones magazine. Mariah, welcome to Democracy Now! Just lay out what you have found. Well, essentially, there is relatively new research showing that the vast majority of plastics, at least uh, commercially available plastics that are used for food packaging, contain BPA-like chemicals, so chemicals that are what they call estrogenic. And, and explain what BPA is. So BPA is a, a chemical that mimics the hormone estrogen. And estrogen plays—we all have estrogen in our bodies. It plays an essential role in various bodily functions and is also very important in human development, so the development of our brain, the development of our organs. Uh, however, too much or too little of this hormone, basically, especially during uh, early childhood or prenatally, can set you up for disease later on in life. So exposure, what the research shows is that exposure in the womb can then lead to breast cancer, diabetes, uh, increased aggression, uh, uh, really sort of a staggering list of health problems later on in life. And so talk about what has happened since BPA has been banned. So, yes, and, and many people will recall that in 2008, the dangers of BPA became very widely known. Uh, there was there was a, a scare. Major retailers pulled BPA from it from their shelves. Uh, customers began de demanding BPA-free products, especially for children, and many manufacturers began introducing products that were BPA-free. Uh, and all of us who have children have these BPA-free products in our home, most likely. Uh, one of the so and in many cases it turns out that the the chemicals that were that were used to replace BPA or the the, the plastics contained chemicals that were you know similar to BPA. Um, at any rate, many of these many of these chemicals had not been tested uh, to to see whether they had similar properties to BPA, whether they mimicked estrogen in essence, and uh, it turns out that that many of them do. So you the. The implication is that they could have similar effects on human health. You, you begin your piece uh, by telling us the story of Michael Green and his daughter. Talk about yes. that experience. So Michael, Michael Green is—he had a two-year-old daughter. He's somebody who works in, in the environmental health field. And he, he had heard— he had seen research suggesting that BPA-free plastics may have may have posed some of the same problems to human health, and but he told me this this very moving story about 
about himself and his two-year-old daughter. Somebody else in the family had given his two-year-old daughter this pink plastic sippy cup with, with a picture of a princess on it, which she just loved. And every night at dinner time, they would have this battle of the wills over this pink plastic sippy cup. He wanted to give her the stainless steel sippy cup. She wanted the, the pink plastic sippy cup. And in the interest of maintaining peace in the household, occasionally he gave in and gave her this pink plastic sippy cup. But the decision really weighed on him. And I think that those of us who have children, I have a three-year-old son, can relate to the situation where, where sometimes you do the expedient thing in the interest of peace, but you, you, you wonder if it's the best thing for your child. And in this case, he decided that he would try to answer that question. Uh, and and he, he runs this environmental health organization, and he collected sippy cups from, from Walmart and Toys R Us, uh, Babies R Us, I'm sorry, and he sent them to an independent lab in Texas to be tested. And he found out that, in fact, uh, roughly a third of them did contain estrogen-like chemicals. And that and, pink, and that pink sippy cup? His, his daughter's sippy cup was leaching estrogenic chemicals. And so his, his fears were founded. What can that do to her? This is, this is the big question. We know a lot about BPA. BPA is one of the most studied chemicals on the planet. And, and we know that these chemicals generally are associated with a range of negative health effects. But the specific effect of any given chemical uh, varies slightly from chemical to chemical. And we actually don't know what chemical is leaching out of that sippy cup. So it's impossible to know. I mean, there's, there's a very high correlation with breast cancer, for example, with, with all of these estrogenic chemicals and with certain developmental problems. But, this, but other specific diseases vary from chemical to chemical. So Michael Green, the way he describes it is uh, an unplanned science experiment that we're doing on our families all of the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to break and then come back to this discussion and uh, talk about big tobacco, what big plastic has learned from big tobacco. Uh, we are talking to Mariah Blake, a staff reporter with Mother Jones. Her story is in the new issue of the magazine. It's called The Scary New Evidence on BPA-Free Plastics and the Big Tobacco-Style Campaign to Bury It. Stay with us.